as we live. Hey everybody, good evening, happy Tuesday evening, Mom. Let me see if I can't get us up on the page here real quick. Keep our fingers crossed, right? Let me see, oh, not quite yet. Almost. It's gonna take a couple minutes for this to come up, but that's okay. Let's see, come on. Not quite. So we'll just hang on for a minute. We'll let some people come through here and we'll kind of go from there. Come on. I'm going to wait a little bit, you guys, until I get us up here. I know it's going to take about a minute and a half to get us going because that's what it usually takes. I don't know why, but it does. But anyways, come on in here. Here we are. I got me. I got me on Facebook. We are good on Facebook. Let's see. Happy day. Let's get this blown up here so I can see everybody. There we go. Hey there. Hey there, everybody. Hi, Denise, Lori, Gerilyn, and Gail, and Tracy. Hi, everybody. And Miss Ella's on. Miss Jackie Fernandez. Hey, girl. How are you? Come on. That's Bing Poupe. It's giving me a blank screen here. I can see your names pop up and Sharona's on. Hi, Charlie. Good to see you too. You guys, we have a really great um, fun project for you all tonight. We are going to be working with the Unique in the Creek crossboard. How appropriate, because Easter is really just around the corner, whether we want to admit it or not. It kind of is. Hey, Margaret, how are you? So we're going to be working with this tonight. Now, I kind of switched up. I was going to do something else tonight, but then I got a lot of questions um, on this um, re on this cross that I posted on the um, on the Unique in the Creek page, and people were asking me about the pedal. So I said, well, let me go live and show everybody how I did this pedal. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you how I did this pedal that I got going on tonight, and we're going to kind of go from there, okay? So that's what we're going to be using. Um, we're also we're going to be using our wood burning tool now y'all if you haven't used one of these yet you can get I got mine at Walmart a hundred years ago at least and I'm using the exact same tip on it that came on it a hundred years ago and you can see this has been put through the ringer actually I could use a new tip on the end of that but that's what we have this was like under $15 at the time I don't know how much it is now but this is a Walmart um, wood burning tool and with a piece of glass under it because you don't want to cut anything that doesn't have um, something uh, like ceramic or glass because if you do then it is going to ruin it if I cut on this board it's going to melt the board and we don't want to do that so make sure you have something safe to go under here you also want to have some good ventilation or put some sort of um, mask on because the fumes when you cut your mesh isn't exactly great so here's what I used I have this now, honestly, I don't know where I got this, but it's called a window pane mesh. And I don't know if you can see, see that silver through there? There's silver and white through there, how nice that is. I don't know where I got this. Um, it was a long time ago, and this is my last roll. But, unique in the creek, Lori has something on, and what did I do with my piece of paper? Oh, dang me, dang me, what did I do with my piece of paper? Oh, here it is. Um, she has on her unique in the creek page something called a thin double um, stripe mesh in white. Now it looks like the window pane here, but I don't think it has the silver through it. So if you go on the page, um, Unique in the Creek, you can, the number of the, of the mesh that looks like this is RE137427. That's RE137427. Looks a lot like this, so give that a try. And we're also going to be using this luscious peach. This is a peach poly burlap. Now, you might say, well, that looks orange to me. But when you put this next to an orange, the difference is night and day. This is a beautiful soft peach, you guys. So I encourage you to grow grab. Why don't you grow grab <laughs> one of these <laughs> from Unique in the Creek. It's a poly, it's a poly burlap mesh, okay? These are the two we're going to be using tonight. And I'm going to show you... Um, and we're also going to be using this ribbon. This is also from Unique in the Creek, and this is a, a 7 8 times 10 yards. And um, the number on this ribbon here, it's a beautiful, beautiful green. Look at that glitter. We're going to be using that too. The number on this is um, RGE738089. 
That's RGE738089. We're going to be using this as well on our cross. All right, let's get in. Let me show you how I made this pedal. Now, the name of this pedal um, is a cone pedal. It's the cone pedal. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. All right. So we're going to kind of be putting one piece of mesh over the other. You're going to start with your um, darker piece on the bottom here, which is going to be this peach. And then we're going to take this window pane mesh and we're going to put right over the side of this. Hi, Nancy. Doing great. Thank you. Right over the top of it. Now, this happens to be 10 and a half inches. This happens to be 10 inches, so we're going to have a little bit of an overlap. I try to even it out. I always don't do a good job, but if you can work with two tens, that would be great. If you can't, like me, <laughs> then you're going to have to kind of, um, you're going to have to fix these so that it kind of has an even space between here and here for the extra half inch, okay? So when you get these, the edges are going to be jagged, so I'm going to bring you guys really close. So what I would like you to do is just kind of line your edges up the best you can here. And our very first cut is going to be simply to attach these two pieces together. So when I run my wood burning tool down here, it is going to fuse these two pieces together. All right, so I want to make sure that I have a pretty good space here and here so that there's not more down here than there is up here. You're going to try. It doesn't always work great, but you do your best to make sure that these are kind of um, even steven since this has a little bit more on top. This is 10 and a half. The underneath is 10, 10 inches, okay? So I'm just going to line these guys up and then I'm going to take a swipe. Now, I'm going to try to explain this. Usually when we cut our deco mesh, we pick, <clears throat> we pick a spot on our mesh and we, we follow that line. So if this is my, say this is my 10 inch mark, I'm going to follow that line all the way down through, right? But since we're overlapping, we're going to follow one of these top lines all the way down through and disregard the lines on the bottom. Did that make any sense to you all? You have to follow lines somewhere, and it doesn't make sense to follow the underneath lines under here. You have to follow the lines that are on top and just disregard the, the bottom peach lines, all right? So we're just going to concentrate on the top mesh lines. So I'm going to line it up top and bottom the best I can for right now, and I'm going to make that first cut, which is going to make these two guys fuse together. All right, so here we go. We're gonna just pick a spot here that I think will get this whole thing. So I'm gonna start this down and I'm gonna burn this together. And you're gonna follow the same line all the way down through, the same line. It's like a car lane. Pick a lane and stay in it, all right? Pick a lane and stay in it. So you can see how when I did that, that same piece of mesh is all the way down through. Right? I didn't switch lanes. It's that same all the way down through there. Okay, so that fused these guys together. Now I can start mapping out my 10 inches. Okay, so I've got my little measuring tape down here and I'm just going to um, line this up with the edge of my board. I'm going to even these guys up again because this can get out of line. Alright, so that I don't have too much on one end and not enough on the other. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take my hand and I'm going to pull this and make this all flush so that there's no bumps in it, okay? You want to make sure that the underneath isn't puffy. So I run my hand across it and then I'm going to find my 10 inch mark where this line is on my 10 inch mark and I'm going to start cutting down through. So let me see if I can see here. It's going to be about here, so I need the second one in. I'm going to do about here is where I need to be. So I'm going to follow this line all the way down through. I'm going to stay in my lane, in that same lane, all the way down through. You'll notice that I do not have a measuring tape up here because I don't need it. I just need to find one 10 inch mark and then go all the way down through. Let's do that one more time because I'll probably need a couple of those. 
Well, that's good because I've got room for just one more here. I've made the petals ahead of time. So we're still fused here, right? This is still fused. And then we're just going to put that at the end over here. That's kind of like the zero. And then we're going to push this out because this is the end, end, end of the peach. So this is my last one. And I'm going to line these guys up. This is way out of line. So I've got to line the top and the bottom up together here the best I can. All right, and then I'm going to just take my hand. I'm going to go like that. I'm going to find my 10 inch mark here and I am going to cut all the way down through, staying in my lane on the top of this white and silver mesh. All right, and there's that, and whoops. And that fused it all together. All right, those two are fused together. I'm all done with this, so I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna move it, you guys, so I don't burn myself. Um, this would hurt really, really bad, so I don't wanna be clumsy. I'm gonna unplug it and take it over to my other table, okay? Okay, now that we've got these guys done, we got those made, we are going to, let me show you how to do the petal. So see, this did pucker a little bit underneath, see that, that pucker, but I think I'm gonna be okay. All right, so let's take this out of here too, because we don't need the glass anymore. And I'll kind of hang out of the screen, so I'll open this up just a little bit for you all. All right, so here we have, see, here we have a finished side, and our finished side is at the top and the bottom. I'm just gonna turn that into a triangle. And my unfinished side is gonna be at my top left and my bottom right. All right, it's gonna be different. I usually do it the other way, but for this petal, you want your unfinished side on the top left and the bottom right. You're going to take the bottom, bring it to the top, and I see how there's an overlap here. I'm going to line up this one and this one. I'm going to line up my silver and white together. Remember, we're working with a 10 and a 10 and a half inch, so it makes it just a little bit difficult. So now what we're going to do is put a clip on that, and I'm going to flatten this baby down. Flatten her down, down, down. That's what we want to do. Okay, and then we're going to take one of the sides, I'm gonna work on my left side, I'm gonna bring this over toward the middle, and I am, here's your middle, I am gonna bring it past the middle a little bit. All right, bring it right down and close. And then these bottoms, see how I've lined that bottom up there? You don't want it down here, and you don't want it up there, you want it lined up along the bottom. So you bring that over past the middle a little bit, and you're gonna do the same, same thing to this side, pass it over to the middle, it's gonna overlap this one a little bit. My goal here is to have this side looking the same as this side when I fold it. So I fold that over, and they look about the same like an envelope, right? So that looks just like an envelope, so like an envelope right there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one side and fold that over again. Take the other side, fold it over again. So the goal here is to have this middle part line up with the top of this, right? I don't want the middle off to one side or another. I'm gonna to try to line this up the middle the best I can. It looks like I did. Now, when you're using these kinds of mesh, which they're both pretty thick, this is gonna be super duper thick when you're trying to put your rubber band on the bottom. So what I do is I just take it and put these up like that, and then I put my rubber band around it and then it goes over just like that. That's the petal. All right, that's how that's going to look. All righty, now if you're gonna use one mesh, like let's just say I use the peach mesh, just this peach mesh, it would be a whole lot easier to scrunch than it will be with these two pieces that are very thick. So be, keep mindful that the thicker you do this, the harder it is to scrunch them. So that's kind of what you're left with when you do it. All right now, this is the petal 
on the wreath that I had made that everybody was asking about. So this is what the petal's gonna look like on this wreath. See how this beautiful that is all the way down? This is the goal that we're trying to achieve. Okie dokie. So with that said, we'll do one more petal. Let's do one more petal. Hey everybody, hey there Charlene, how are you guys? This is not breeze mesh, no. This is not breeze mesh. Um, this is an old mesh. I think I could have even gotten it at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. I don't remember, or Craft Outlet, I don't remember. But like I said, Lori has one very, very similar, very, very similar to this on there, on her page, okay? And if you look it up on Lori's page, it's called Thin Double Stripe Mesh in White. And earlier I gave the numbers so you can look that up, okay? So again, we're gonna turn this over, it's 10 by 10. This doesn't look 10 by 10 to me. Let me see what I did here. This is a little shy of 10 inches. This might be a little wonky donk, but we'll see. So you're gonna have the curl side up. You're going to have your, your rough edge here and your rough edge here. So um, in, a, in a triangle, bring the bottom to the top. I like to clip them. It's always good to clip these tops, you guys. Yes, yeah, see, we're, we're off by quite a bit here, so we'll have to see how that plays out, but we're gonna make this work, so let's just roll with it. This didn't come out 10 by 10, but you know, you know, make yours 10 by 10. I did this a little wonky. Then you're gonna take this and pull it over to the middle, just past the center. Bring this over to the middle, just past the center. I try to get these two envelope things to look about the same. And then you're gonna roll one side in, you're going to roll the other side in and make sure that this center runway lines up with the tip. That's what your goal is. The center of the runway is going to line up with your tip. You're going to bring those together. Just like that. And then I turn mine sideways. I grab one of these rubber bands from Unique in the Creek. And then since it's so thick, I'm just going to put that up just like that and put the rubber band around it. And that is what our petal looks like. All right, so let's get going. Let's start building this, okay? Let's build it. Let's build it, build it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the breeze mesh and I haven't tried it yet either. So we can probably take this off here because we don't need that anymore. Um, we can do a little housekeeping here. Get rid of some of these stuff. Take a little break. That's a water break, my friends. Okay, so grab your six inch zip ties. There's a beautiful tulip post in the Unique in the Creek. I'll bet there is. Um, we are going to use our six inch zip ties and we are gonna start, I always start backwards, you guys. I always start like on the bottom. I don't know, you can start anywhere on these that you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna start on the bottom and we're gonna start row 11 and do every other row. So we're gonna go row 11, nine, seven, five. And we're gonna put zip ties in both of these, both of these, All right? Row 11, here we go. Zip ties on row 11. We're going in, we're going in for it. We'd be going in for it, you guys. Let me get my little clicker out. Let me get my little zip tie, my zip tie clicker out of here. All right. And let's start with one of these. Okay, let's start with this. We're going to take it, put it down. Now, what you have to do is decide, the reason I start on the second row in and not do every row, first of all, you don't need every row. And I don't want to start down here because I just think it makes it way too long. Just, it doesn't even look good. And plus when we start on the second row in, we can do every other evenly, right? So that works out well. So that's what I'm gonna do. So decide how far down you're going here. I usually end up putting it in right where I put my, um, my tie in. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put that in like that and then get our zip tie and zip tie this in just like that. All right, and same thing with this one. This is one we just did. And we're gonna put that in right next to it. Now the big thing here is you wanna make sure to begin with that these two guys line up. 
right? Make sure those guys line up, the tips of them line up, because you want this to be nice and clean when people look at it. All right, let's see here. Do it down just a smidge of room. Maybe this has to go up just a smidge of room. Let's see, that looks about right to me. So I'm gonna leave that just like that, and then we're gonna zip tie these in, and we're gonna clamp them down. Okay, there we go. So there's row number one. Number one. All right, one looks this one looks a little shorter, but I'm gonna be okay with that for this minute. Um, oh, I have a lot more here to make. I guess I didn't make all of my things like earlier, like I thought. I thought I made most of these, but I do have a few more to do, so I better kind of kind of get these going. So let's make a few more while we're at it, okay? So again, it's 10 by 10. Turn that up. And give it a clip. Flatten it out. Flatten it out. And turn it over. Turn it over. There's our envelope. Now we're going to turn in each of the sides again. Turn it in. And turn it in. Just like that. Okay. Take a rubber band, put your rubber band around it, and you're good to go. Okay, and that should turn in just like that. All right, now this is super thick, like I said. All right, so we had row 11, we're going up to row 9, up to row 9 right now, and maybe we'll put the rest of these in. That way, when I make the rest of my petals over here, I don't have to I really, I don't have to put the um, rubber band around them. I can really just tie them right into um, my zip ties, which is gonna be really, really good. So that'll work out well, right? Okay, so every other. You're going to need a total of 24 petals for this because we are going to use the corners. We're going to do these corners like we do um, when we do these crosses. At least I do the corners. All right, so there's these guys all set. Let me see here. All right, let's put this guy in just like that. And then you have to decide how far down this pedal that you want this pedal to go. I like it to kind of go right, cover this part up here, and you can see about how you think you like it. But I like I like it to cover this V up, just like that. You all can make the choice of how you think you want yours to look, but that's kind of how I wanted mine to go. Okay. And let's get another one that we made. Once you get these all made up, you're good to go. And then you want these two guys to line up as well. All right. So maybe before you tuck these in really, really tight, you can kind of just turn it around, eyeball it, see if these are about where you think you want them before you start really tucking these in, right? And no harm, no foul. If you get them tucked in here and then you decide that you want to move it, well, you just take off the zip tie and you move it, right? No harm, no foul. All right, so there's those. Let's put these guys in. I got another one here. And we do the same thing, put him in. I thought the peach was beautiful, you guys. Um, I just thought it would be really kind of cool to have a, a peach cross. I mean, not a lot of people do crosses in peach, but you know what? There's no rules. As long as it's pretty, I say you need to go for it. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let me bring my garbage over here so I can throw my stuff in. All right, let's make some more petals. Let's get some more of these petals rocking and rolling. Okay, here we go. All this is raw edge to my top left and bottom right bottom up to the top and because these are uneven see this is 10 and a half 10 inches i'm going to line up these two outside ones the two silver and white pieces are what i'm lining up put that down like that crunch it in there 
and fold one over. Crunch that down if you want. Fold this over, crunch it down so that my envelope looks pretty even here. I'm just going to roll one side of the envelope in, other side of the envelope in. The goal is to have this center runway on the center up into here. Just see if you can get that rocking, and I think I did. So I'm not going to put I'm not going to put um, a rubber band around this. I'm just going to take it like it is. I'm going to hold it, and stick her on in here. See how that works. <laughs> That's probably a mistake. You know, it just crunches it together, so no harm, no foul. See, it just crunches that together, so that's that's fine. Bring it down a little. Okay, perfect. And do it again. Once you get these going, it goes pretty fast. It's a real easy pedal to do, right? Nothing real difficult about this, but I think it looks really, really good when you get it on the board. So you can get all your supplies from Unique in the Creek. Really, all of this came from Unique in the Creek. I mean, this exact window pane didn't, but in general, you can find one very similar to it on Unique in the Creek. The peach came from Unique in the Creek. The board came from Unique in the Creek. The ribbon that we use came from Unique in the Creek. So you can do your one-stop shopping, and you can do the whole thing, okay? Hey, Virginia, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a million years. Where have you been? Where have you been, young lady? All right, stick her on right in here. We're gonna try to line these guys up. I like this one a little bit lower if I can. I'm gonna lower this down just a smidgeroo. There we go. Line these guys up. And then we're gonna make a beautiful bow on this, a beautiful bow. All right, let's get these guys where we need them to be, right? These guys to line up. These guys roll over. Okay, here we go. Looks pretty good to me. And that's it for that row. Okay, that's it for this row. So here's the back. Right, here's the back. We've got this, every other here, every other here, and here. And now I'm going to go to, well, let's go to the top. How about that? So we're going to start in with row two. Row two, we're going to put these in just like we did before. Stick them on in there. And then we're going to go to row four. Just two, row two and row four on the top part of your cross. That's all you need. You'll need a total of 24 petals. All right, so there we go. Four petals here, that's all it's going to take. Alrighty, so let's do some more. Let's just make some more. Let's just make these guys up. Now I have a whole bunch more made already, you guys, so don't worry that you're going to, you're not, I promise you're not going to sit here and you're gonna, not going to sit here and watch me make petals all night. I do have a whole bunch of them made, but I think I had about a half dozen that I hadn't made. So I figured I wanted to save those for you guys, right? We got to make our envelope look just like an envelope, right? Just like an envelope. And then we're going to fold side in, side in, and there you go. Take it, because it's so thick, boop, pop it up just like that, and put your rubber band around. I got it probably around, oh, the first, let me measure this. There's probably about an inch from here to here that I have puckered up there, okay? And then you can take this off. And we'll do more. Okay, this will be the last one. And then I'll save the others for when we get a little bit further into the cross. We'll do a few more, okay? Yep. Get my little rubber bands out of here. Okay, there we are. So those are done. All right, so let's get these in here. 
let's get these in here. And remember, you want these guys to face that direction because we're going up, right? Going up. And then you gotta decide how far up you want this to be. I'm gonna put right about where the rubber band was. I can bring in just a little bit more if you want to. How about that? And we'll grab another one, put right beside it. And again, I'm gonna to try to line these two top ones up the best I can. That looks pretty good right there because we want these guys to be even. All right, let's see what I think here. That looks about right. Now these might overlap a little bit up front here, but that's okay. All right, because that's the top right there. All right, let's go. Let's get the rest of these guys in here. And that's going to go this way, and I want it to come right in that crevice there, right up in the middle of that. It'll be just about perfect for me. Alright, let's see if we got these about right. Let's pull this down just a little bit more. That looks about right to me, so good. Now I'm going to clip these guys out of here. Alright. Okay, there we are. So now we're going to go on these parts right here. I'm going to go on those parts. I'm just trying to re refresh my page here, you guys. It keeps going away on me. I don't know why. It just likes to keep going away for some strange reason. And my comments. I want to get my comments up. All right, so we're going to do these guys here. We're going to do each of these sides. So we're going to start over. Well, I might as well start with row A. So we're going to start the A side. We're going to start with row B and then row D. Row B and D on this one. I can put these in correctly, right? I'm gonna bring it toward me so I don't have to reach across my bad self to get this in here, right? Why make things difficult for myself? Alrighty, and now into row D. Row B and row D. There we go. And my other hole's hiding underneath here. I'm going to have to move that little bit of mesh to get my other zip tie in here. All right, so there we go. B and D, just like that. And we're going to have our petals facing out this way, just like that. So see how pretty this is going to be? It's a little bit different, you guys, but don't be afraid to do something a little bit different. All righty. And I'm going to make sure these ends line up pretty good here. One's overlapping just a little bit. Because like I said, they're very thick. And my edges look to be pretty good, so I'm going to zip tie these guys in here. I wanted to make sure these edges were even. Okay. And then we're going to do row D. And I think I'm going to turn this this way. I'm going to open this up a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put these guys right in here. Oops, backwards. Oh, backwards. Sound the backwards bell. There we go. That fits right where I want it to. And now we're going to get this guy in here. I'm going to grab my, my needle nose here for just a little bit easier. Grab that like that. And then we'll do this one just like this. Now, if you guys wanted to do this petal, but wanted this to be your front, you could easily make this your front. But I kind of like the roll part in here. So that's why I chose to do it like this. And we want to make sure that these guys are even down here. Before I tighten it down too much, I'm going to see if that's what I like. And it is, so that looks pretty good to me. Okay. Alrighty. Now we're going to the other part. 
every other. We're going to start with G and E. Row G and row E here. It, the, new, the new breeze mesh mimics the fabric mesh, is that right? We'll have to give that a shot. We'll have to give that a try. Oh, that's a great idea. So you can put a point on it and put it in the ground. Yep, that's a great idea. Just looking at some of your things here. Some of your comments. Okay, so there you go on these guys. Put it there, so we'll put these guys in. I'll move this aside so I can kind of get these in here like this. Here's that one. And here's this one. Alright, so before I tighten it, I want to make sure these two ends are pretty even and they look pretty good to me. So we'll tighten that down. Alright, super good. There we go. Alright, let's make a couple more petals because I do have a few more to make. We just got two more to make here, so let's make them. Let's get them done. Raw edge, raw edge. Top left, bottom right bottom corner up to the top. I like to clip my top together, flatten it down, flatten it down like a pancake, pancake, pancake. One side over past the middle, keeping this bottom edge lined up, flatten that baby down, turn this guy over the same way, just like an envelope, flatten that baby down, take one side, flip it over again, the other side, flip it over again. Make sure that this middle aisle lines up with the top part of your petal, and away you go. I turn it sideways, give it a little bump, put one of these guys on, it looks like that. And then put one of these guys on, and we are home free. Just like that. Okay, there's that one. And our very last petal is right here. This is it for tonight for the petal making. You can match up any kinds of mesh that you would like or stick with one mesh. You do not have to use two different kinds of mesh and overlay them. You do not have to do that, you guys. But I just thought it looked so pretty you know, to overlay these. All right, -a. all right, all right. -a. There we go, let's bring it back out again. Put these guys in here. Let's put them in, right up in here. Now this middle, they start stacking on each other. You'll know that these are thick. Roll that in. And one last one right here. Put that in. And get this guy going just like that. And we're going to make sure these are lined up here, which they are, which I love. Okay, let's move these guys in. Okay, so this is our cross as it is. Okay, this one's open a little bit more than the rest of them, so I'm going to try to close that up just a little bit. All right, now what we're going to do, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a bow for the middle of this. And you'll notice that I do not have any peach ribbon. I, I mean, I have peach ribbon, but nothing that I wanted to use on this cross, you guys. So I'm going totally off the board with a different color, but it's going to coordinate beautifully. The, 
the color is going to coordinate beautifully with this peach, right? So look how pretty that is. Right? If you don't have any color in ribbon or pattern that you like to match, pick something that's going to complement it, right? This here is a 7 8 ribbon from Unique in the Creek. I wanted something that was a thinner ribbon, and then we're going to make a really nice big bow. Okay, so let's do that right now. Let's get out. Let's get out our Pro Bowl to Hand board right here, you guys. Let's move this. Oh no, we gotta we gotta do the corners. Wait, we gotta do the corners. Wait, corners. You guys yell corners. Did anybody yell corners? Did anybody yell corners at all? Did you not? You didn't. You did not yell corners, you guys. You aren't paying attention. You gotta pay attention and keep me in line. I'm telling you right now. I'm so excited to make the bow. We almost didn't get the corners. How can that be? <laughs> Corners, everybody. All right, here we go. So this is going to lay on top of these guys, right? It's going to look right up in there because that's what it's going to do. That's the way it's got to be. Well, maybe I can stick it in like that. No, I can't. I've got to piggyback it over the top there. My goodness. All right, so here's this one. Here's that. And they are going to kind of bend back just a little bit on the corners, but that's okay. It's gonna be okay. All right, let's get this corner done. So y'all know what I mean by corners, right? Corner, 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 corner. That's what I mean by corners. this around so it's easy for me to get this in here yeah the bow does cover the corners but I do like a little something else up down there that's just me you 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 have the option of not doing corners if that's the look that you're going for I was going for the corner look so but you all you all honestly you don't have to do the corners I just thought it gave it a more a little more of a complete look I guess so that's why I decided to do them so there you go this guy's a little wonk, wonky wobbly. He's wonky wobbly. Get him up there. I might end up having to maybe glue him up or something. I'll have to see. Let's see what I'm going to do with him. Let's see how he acts. If he acts up, I'm going to have to figure him out. So, so like on this one. So on this purple one, you guys, see? Corners. See the corners? Corner, 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 corner. See them in there, right there, there's a corner. So we just have those corners. That's kind of what I'm going for there. But like I said, if you don't want to do the corners, don't do the corners. Okay. One more. You like seeing the corners done, Lynn? Yeah. I like I like it. It kind of completes it. I think if you don't do them, it kind of, it's like, oh, uh, there's a spot there. You know, you're looking at like the spot. I might have to make these guys behave themselves somehow. So we'll have to figure that out. All right, let's see. I should have one more of these. One more right down in here. And then I can get excited about making my bow. I was so excited that I just, <laughs> I skipped them. All right. Let me grab my, uh, my pliers here. This cut a little bit short. This is a pretty sharp piece here. So I'm going to cut that right out of here. Some of these are a little short. Cut them off just a little bit. There we go. All right. Now we can go put our thing in. So see that? See how it just completes completes these sides here? See that? That's what we want. Alrighty, now let's put this guy to rest for a minute. And I do have some greenery. So I've got this greenery here, and I think it's rather pretty. 
and it goes really nicely with this ribbon. So we might be adding some of this greenery in the bow as well as the four corners. I haven't made up my mind yet, but we'll see what we want to do. All right, so let's get this promo out. Let's get this done. All right, so I'm going to need, um, I'm going to take two six inch zip ties because this bow is going to be rather thick when I'm done with it. So I'm going to need two of these to wrap around it. Now you're saying to me, why don't you get a longer zip tie? Well, because if I get a longer zip tie, see how much thicker it is? Look how much thicker it is. This is too thick for my bow, so I don't want to use the longer zip tie. So I'm going to put two of the thinner six inch zip ties together, and that's what I'm going to use um, for my bow. So I'm just going to kind of stick that in here. I'm going to kind of need that afterwards. Get it on in there somehow. Let's stick it in there. All right, now let's. I'm only going to use this. I'm only going to use this one because we don't need any more than one. We don't need any more <clears throat> than one ribbon. So what I'm going to do, I only want one set of tails on these, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to measure out um, about um, 10 inches. I'm going to do 10 inch tail on that side and a 10 inch tail on this side for a total of 20 inches here. All right, so about a 20 inch tail is where this is gonna be. We're gonna put them in just like that. They're gonna face me. They're gonna face me. Let's bring you guys in. Let's get this stuff out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So 10 inches and 10 inches, and that's gonna be my tail, and then I'm gonna just cut this off. About, you guys, you don't have to be, you know, really precise on this, really, because that's just your tail. So that baby is going to stay right down the bottom. I'm going to bring this out for now. And then I'm going to, since, since I'm not going to be using tails throughout this whole ribbon, I'm going to just use about an inch here. I'm going to put it in and twist it. Put it in and twist it to start with my first loop. Can you see? Because I've got this much here on the bottom. And now I'm going to start my loop. My loop is going to be five inches on each side. And I'm going to do four or so. <laughs> of them. I'll make up my mind in a minute. So five inches on each side. Put that right down to the finest part. I'm going to twist it really well. My last bow I didn't twist well enough so I'm going to twist this one really super good. Get in there. Five inches again. All right and then I'm going to twist it super good. All right another five inches. Just line that right up, one on top of the other for your five inches. Easy peasy. Once you get that first loop down, you're good to go. Put it on there, twist it really good, and do the other side. And we're just going to keep doing this until I decide to stop. <laughs> That's the best I got for you, until I decide to stop with this. That's two on each side. This will be three on each side at five inches long. Okay, just like that. And then this side, same deal. Same deal. Get in there. And we're going to twist him. Twist him, twist him, twist him. And I'm going to do one more. at five inches. So I've got four of these at five inches. And I might do one more. Maybe not. Let's see if that's going to be enough. Yeah, I think four. So we've got four of them at five inches. So I'm going to stay here. I'm going to twist this again. Now I'm going to go down to um, probably about four and a half inches on this one. I'm going to go down to four and a half inches on this next one. Four and a half. So four and a half inches. And I've got, I'm going to do four of those as well. So four loops on each side at five inches. Four loops on each side at four and a half inches. All right? All using the same ribbon. I'm not even changing out my ribbon. 
So you're going to use a lot of whatever ribbon you choose unless you're choosing to go with a couple of different a couple of different ribbons. But I'm choosing to go just one of these because I think it'll look really good. All right. And we are here at four and a half inches. The tails are here. There's three. That's three on that side. And we're going with three on this side. Hi, Janine, how are you? It's Jeannie, probably Jeannie, not Janine. There's three, one more at four and a half inches. And that is the fourth one at four and a half inches. So you just stack them right up. All right, so there we go. So there's those. Now I'm still not done. I just want these stacked up nicely for me because when I go to put my um, zip tie around them, I need these to behave because this is gonna be a pretty big stack when we're done. All right, so now I'm going down to, um, I think I'm gonna bring this one down to, what do you think? What do you think? I'm going to do three at three and a half inches. I'm going down a half inch each time. Last time I went down an inch, so I'm going to go down a half inch. So there's three loops on each side at three and a half inches. So there's one. See how thick this is getting? See how thick our bow is getting? Here's one. Now we're going to have two at three and a half inches. It will be worth the wait, I promise. Okay, and this is gonna be our last one for our three and a half inches. Okay. All right, so we got three at three and a half inches. Now we're coming in at two inches, and I'm going to do two at two inches, two of them at two inches. No, yeah, two and a half inches, two at two and a half inches. There's one on that side, there's one on that side, and here it makes two on that side. There's our two, and two on that side. And that was all at two and a half inches. Now I'm coming in with our very last one, and this one is going to be down to two inches. And I think that's just gonna be our center one, I think. Yeah, that's just going to be our center bow, so I'm just going to like leave that like that. We're going to find probably something to put in the middle of this anyways, maybe. Um, let me see if I want to do that or not. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so then we're going to cut that off. That we're going to cut off. I'm going to cut it long, and then we'll cut it off afterwards. Okay, so I'll, I'll recap this. I got four loops on each side at five inches. I got four loops on each side at four and a half inches. I got three loops on each side at three and a half inches. I got two loops at two and a half inches and one loop at, at two inches. So five, four and a half, four, three and a half, three, two, two and a half and two. All right, so see how these are all, see how thick we are? That, my friends, is gonna be a difficult task to keep together. So my job now, my job now is to get all of these in this zip tie without losing my stack. Now I've gotta grab a pipe cleaner so that I can get the pipe cleaner in there to attach that to our um, frame. So let me grab that.
right, you guys. I'm going to need positive vibes here. Let me hear some positive vibes so we can get this all in one piece without me totally wrecking the entire thing. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a stack this big before. Except for the one I did on that purple one was pretty big. Positive vibes here. Any drum roll, please? Come on. I need a drum roll, please. All right, I'm going to take this down. I'm going to put this in behind here so I can get it underneath the zip tie. I'm afraid to take it out quite yet until I get the zip tie in, you guys. There we go. The zip tie's in. Okay, good, good, good. Now I think I can tie this down a little bit more. All right, I want to keep my stack. I want to keep this stack while I tighten it down. All right, that seems about right to me. All right, I don't want to lose the stack, so that's as far as I'm going to go with this, all right? I'm going to clip these off. So now what I like to do, you guys, is I like just really to put this, there's my tails, there's the two tails. I like to just set it right down on my board. Maybe it'll be better on the white. Let me see, is it going to be better on white? Yeah, it'll be better on white. Let's do that. So I like to set this right down here, and then I like starting to pull my things from the bottom here, all right? So let's pull these out. I'm just going to pull them out. Here's my zip, my uh, pipe cleaner. I'm just going to pull these one by one and get a feel for them and where they should be. All right, so there's there's four of these on each side. So there's one. There's two. Three and four. So I'm just going to separate these out, okay? And the same on this side. Here's one, two, well, three and four. You can put them anywhere you want them. For now, I'm just going to separate them. I am not going to fluff them. I just want these separated, all right? So there they are. So we got these guys separated. I'm going up to the next row. One, two, three, and four, right? Because again, we're just separating them. And the same thing with this. Um, one, two, three, there's one, two, three, four. Okay, four and four. And when we get them on our project, we're going to even do a little bit better with them, but I just want them separated for now. And I'm going to the next row up where there's only three. One, two, and three. Next row up should be three. One, two, and three. Just gonna move these around where I want them for now. And next row up should be two, one, and two, and one, and two. Okay, so then we have this middle, but we're gonna tackle that in just a little bit. So now that I have these spread out somewhat, so these are just spread out, right? There's our tails. Now we're gonna put it on the wreath and then we're gonna fix it, okay? All right, let's get it on the wreath. Let's get it on our cross. Um, I kind of have a fluff, uh, no, I don't have a fluff box, but I, I really like doing it on my thing here. It's kind of good for me. I know that's weird. So here is our pipe cleaner. Here's our pipe cleaner. And now I'm gonna pick my spaces here. Let me see the back of my cross. Okay, I've got four right here. So I'm gonna kind of put these in. Here, I'll show you, I'll flip it over in a minute and show you where I put them, okay? 
Let me just get it on here. There we go. So I got it on there. And I need this to go this way. We were just looking for the tails to come down where they're supposed to, that's all. All right, so I'm gonna tuck this in here. All right, we got that tucked in there. And now we get to play with it just a little bit more. All right, so now is when I'm gonna move them around where I need them, and I'm gonna fluff them, right? Because we haven't fluffed any of these yet. We've just moved them to where we think we want them so that they're separated nicely and they look pretty and they do what they're supposed to be doing. So I'm gonna go under each layer and I'm just gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna open up all of these loops. All of our loops, take your time you guys. This is an important step to your wreath making is to open up all of your loops. Just start at the bottom, put your fingers through the loops and open them up because our bows have jobs to do. Not only do they are they supposed to look pretty, but they're supposed to hide things that we don't want to be seen, right? All right, so there's those guys are open. And I'm gonna turn it around. See how we open those up, can you guys see that? See, we open those all up pretty. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. We're gonna bring these tails down to the front and then we're gonna start opening all of these guys up. And you see this little tail here? Remember we started with this tail? We're gonna get rid of that tail in just a little bit because we don't need him. He's done his job and we don't need that tail. So we're gonna make this as pretty as we possibly can. And then we're gonna add some greenery to this, right? And we're going to add our greenery. There we go. That looks really good to me, right about like that. Turn this around. Turn that around, 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 around. Okay, look how beautiful that looks now. Look how beautiful this looks. Okay, so that looks super, super good now. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna maybe add some of the greenery. Now I've gotta clip this off here because, or I could just roll that down. I can roll that right down underneath. Rather than clipping him, I can roll him. There he goes. Yeah, well, I better, I better clip him. He's a little oddball there. There we go and then we'll open that right up just like that for our center. And we'll start putting some, some greenery in here, okay? Now before you start adding greenery to your bow, you wanna make sure the pieces are about where you need them. Because once you start adding greenery and they stick to your bow, then you're not gonna be able to move these bow guys around that easy, okay? So we've got some of these. Remember I pulled these out a little earlier because I thought they were so beautiful with that bow that I'm going to take um, and see how much of these I want to use, all right? So I'm going to start clipping these off. Actually, I don't even, I think I can pull them out of here. Ugh. 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 Ah, I thought I could pull them out of there. So I need to see what I want to do with these. Look how nice these are and, and how much of these I want to use. So um, I'm thinking I like them coming out the edge, but I want them just I want them coming out a little bit, not out as much as the purple one. So I'm gonna cut these back because I don't think I need all of these guys. So let me just give a little bit of, a I think I'm gonna cut this back here, back in here. So I cut that part off and I want the part with these little flowers on it. So I'm gonna take that part and I'm gonna glue it up in here just so it hangs out a little bit, okay? So let's get a few of these guys in here. And then I'm gonna tuck this, let me get it so it's sitting right, tuck it right up in here. 
and I just want it showing just a little bit. Now I'm going to have to refluff. I know I'm going to have to refluff my my bow, you guys, because I am. But that's okay because we have to lift it up to put this guys these things in. All right. So I just barely want that coming, and I'll show you in just a second. Give me just a minute. Let me get these in here, <clears throat> and I'll show you what we've done. Okay. And have another drink of water. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to corners, right? We're doing four corners. We're going four corners in here. So I'm going to give this guy some glue and stick them right up in there. Now I know you can't see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to show you in just a second what I've done in here. All right. I'm going to show you what I've done. So I just glued them right up underneath there. Okay, that's what I did, just glued it. And then my bow is going to come down and cover a multitude of sins, right? Because we need to cover up what we just did with all the glue and everything. So that's where my bow is going to come in. And he is going to help me cover up some of this stuff. I'm making sure that my leaves are pointing the right way, so I'm kind of... There we go. All right, now we're going in the other direction here. We're coming up the top end of this. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, we use it just like it is, just like that's how we're using it. Yeah, we're going to do the exact same thing. Stick them right up in here. Where he belongs. Something small. I'm just gluing it right into the mesh, really, you guys. I'm just I'm opening I'm opening up. I'm opening up this part and I'm sticking the the um part of the flower stem in there and then closing it back up again. That's how I'm gluing these in. Okay? And then I'm bringing my ribbon back around to cover up what I just did. Right? And we're still going to have to play with the ribbon just a little bit, but we'll get there. Okay? All right, let's do the other two spots that we have going on here with these guys because they're so pretty. I got these. I got these from Joann's. Um, I don't know when. Probably... Last year or so, I'm thinking. They're really quite nice. All right, so let's get these up into here. Pinching that up oh, wrong. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. I thought I had it in the wrong spot for a second. I'm like, uh oh, that was wrong. Okay, we got it in all four spots, so it's very subtle. Right, they're very subtle on these corners, right, on the upper corners and the lower corner. Just a little something something coming down the bottom there. But now what we're going to do is we're going to, and I might add some more in there too. I think I might add a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I don't want it too green. So now we're going to start adding it to our bow because the bow needs some of that as well. But I'm not going to add the leaves. I'm just going to add these into the bow. Okay. So I'm really going to just snip these off because I like the contrast of this to the bow. So I'm just going to snip that off. Let's see. Yeah, that would be pretty. So let's let's get this back where it needs to be before we stick our flowers in. And then we're just about done. I think we're just about done with this. Let's see if I can... I need to face it my way so I can see exactly kind of what I've done here. Moving these guys around correctly. All right, it's looking pretty, pretty good to me. Okay, it looks like I can place these pretty good now. So I'm just going to take some of these guys, give them a little glue. Don't you go off on me. And then just start kind of sticking them in here. Wherever I think I want them. I 
I like things like this where you can just kind of pick it apart and use what you like out of it, you know? All right, so I got three more here, and I'm going to just kind of stick these in. And this one's going to go, I think, under here. And I'm really sticking them, literally, you guys, right to the ribbon. It's going right on to the ribbon. Tuck them right underneath. This one, I think, right in there. And I'm going to curl that one more here. Let's do another one. The center, maybe. No, I don't think I like that in the center. So let's see. I think I'm going to put it right over here. That could be over there. right in here just so they're peeking out all right I think we got it now I'm going to take these guys and I think I'm going to kind of curl them if you take a glue stick and you wrap it around your ribbon all the way around all the way to the top kind of on a spiral Take that out and then just kind of pull this down and you can loosen this up just a little bit, but it gives you the spiral that you want anyways. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'm gonna just spiral this down. And I'm a glue stick. And get these in there nice. You can pull them down as low as you want. All right, I think we got this done, you guys. Let's see. Get this turned around. And we have those little flowers. See, we have these sticking out of here around that. And then we have this like that. bring these down just a little bit more. Oops. And there's our top. Right, so how pretty is that, right? The bow is everything in person, you guys. This bow is everything in person. The sparkle on this bow. I know you can't see it well here, but it's beautiful. And then just these coming out the bottom a little bit. A hint on the bottom of the corners is pretty. A little bit of the contrast of these. I think they're silver dollars. I think they call them silver dollars or something like that. But that turned out really super cute, really super cute. And there's our four corners, so there's the two at the top, and there's our corners at the bottom there. But I think it's so pretty um, with this silver going through it here is really gorgeous. I know you can't see that well, but it really is quite beautiful. Okay, you all, thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate you all being on here. I appreciate you all being on here. Um, I will see you again in another couple of weeks and we come up with something else really fun to do. Any questions on this one? We all good? All right, you guys, thank you so much and have a great rest of your week. I'll see you in two weeks. Good night, everybody.